For Session Update, I'm Shannon Lurkey. The House has advanced a bill to reopen the Appleton prison to alleviate prison overcrowding and the housing of inmates in county jails. This controversial issue stirs passions about the incarceration rate, sentencing guidelines for low-level drug possession, and whether it is appropriate to use prisons as a means of economic development in rural areas. Senator Ron Latz joins me in the studio to talk about this. Welcome, Senator Latz. Thank you. Good to be here, Shannon. The uh, House advanced a bill yesterday to reopen the Appleton prison. Do you support that bill? No, I do not. And why? Uh, I think it would be a bad idea for a lot of reasons. Uh, one is it's, uh, <clears throat> it's a capacity issue that we're trying to deal with, but it's going on the wrong way. We've had a task force that we've worked on that I initiated uh, and co-chaired with Representative Cornish for the last eight months, mm -hmm. looking at the situation of our prison population and whether there's anything that can be done to reduce that prison population and still keep the public safe. And we had testimony from lots of places that said there are quite a few things that we can do uh, to improve the way we treat our prisoners, prepare them better for their transition back into society, where 95% of them will end up eventually, mm -hmm. reduce their likelihood of recidivating or committing new offenses or, or violations of their probation or parole conditions, and coming back into the prison system. So to touch on the overcrowding issue, right now many of the inmates are being housed in county jails, which means they're not having access to the services and the programs that they need in order to you know, be re rehabilitated. How quickly can this be addressed? Well, we can move some of these reforms along very quickly. Uh, for example, 2,700 of the current state prisoners um, are release violators, people who are already released, they made some mistakes on their violation, uh, you know, didn't keep in touch with their, their PO or something like that, um, and uh, they got yanked back into the prison. Um, and some of them, frankly, probably did not need to come back or come back for as long. Many of them are short-term residents back in the system. Uh, so some of those things can be done in quite uh, a short order. But it's a short-term and a long-term problem. The long-term uh, trend uh, and projections are with higher prison population. Mm -hmm. But we can make some tweaks now to the statutes, like more chemical dependency treatment, better mental health services, uh, and uh, perhaps changing some of the drug sentencing guidelines, mm -hmm. uh, working more on employment workforce training, uh, doing a better job with our high risk uh, revocation system for the parolees who are going out that are higher risk. And we can have a pretty dramatic impact within the next couple of years. Uh, that will ad address that population mm -hmm. issue. One of the figures that I read says that the prison population has increased 50 percent since the year 2000. Why are we incarcerating more individuals? Well, this is an, an aggregation of a different decisions relating to specific crimes. Uh, it's very easy in, in this legislative uh, arena to ratchet up criminal penalties mm -hmm. and on their own individual merits, many proposals to do that you know, stand uh, as good proposals. Mm -hmm. uh, we passed the felony DWI statute, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, we now have about 700 people that are incarcerated on felony DWIs. Good proposal in and of itself, mm -hmm. good for public safety. But it has an impact mm -hmm. on our overall prison population. So over the years, we have been making decisions um, that have increased that prison population without looking back at earlier decisions and saying, what have we maybe overdone Mm -hmm. a little bit, or based on things that we know now that we may not have known then, can we make some adjustments that will actually improve the public safety if we, if we treat people more effectively when they're in the prison population, or are things that we can do ahead of the game so that they don't end up in prison in the first place. Those kinds of investments can also reduce our population. So do you support um, lower uh, lower rates of incarceration for smaller drug crimes. I know there's uh, sentencing guidelines that are going to be coming out that will take effect on August 1st unless something stops it from happening. And my understanding is that those mean um, lesser charges or lower incarceration time for smaller levels of, say, drug pr possession. Do you support right. that? Is that a good idea? Will that help with this overpopulation problem? I, I wholeheartedly support the Sentencing Guidelines Commission's uh, decision. Um, it's been talked about for 20 or 30 years, uh, and it's long overdue. And in fact, what it does is it, it will align the Guidelines Commission recommendations or the sentencing that's, are, that's presumptive for the commission of a crime 
with the actual sentences that are being imposed in court by our almost 300 judges around the state. And so you're saying that the judges are currently giving <clears throat> sentences that will match these guidelines right. and that as of now the law is for higher. The judges are departing okay. downward okay. in a lot of cases and uh, they're looking at the individual circumstances and deciding whether or not they think that particular person ought to go to prison for as long as the guidelines say they ought to go and they're deciding in uh, many many cases no it's, it's too severe in the guidelines and they sentence them differently which they have the right to do if they make certain findings mm -hmm. um, and uh, the guidelines commission's changes then would actually reflect that practice. So you've authored a bill to prohibit the state from working with private prisons. Can right. you explain your rationalization for that? Yeah, uh, quite a few reasons actually, but the main one is that private prisons around the country have been prone to uh, problems mm -hmm. in the way they administer their prisons. Um, they've had uh, greater issues with discipline. Um, they haven't had as much staff as they should. Uh, to operate their prisons safely. They don't pro provide the level of treatment for chemical dependency or mental health or for sex offenders uh, within their prisons um, that ought to be provided. Um, they're more of a warehouse than they are a correctional system. And the fundamental premise that we've had in Minnesota is when we bring someone in to an incarceration situation, uh, they're going to be going back into the community, some sooner, some later. Mm -hmm. But they've got problems, that's why they're in the system. The private uh, correctional system simply doesn't provide the kind of service that we need to make them safe, or at least safer, when they go back into the community. There's also something in my mind that's frankly immoral about uh, having profit making occurring on the backs of our prison system and our prisoners. A fundamental role of government, as I see it, is when we have a public safety issue is for the government to provide that public safety by incarcerating people and uh, contracting that out to private providers whose main goal, the stated goal for their shareholders is to make money, not even to take safe care of the prisoners, um, is the wrong way and it's a, it's, it's, I think it's beyond the bounds of morality. So do you think progress is possible with this short session? I do. Yeah. I really do. Um, it'll be tough. There's a lot to do, but we spent eight months looking at these issues before session, so we'd have an opportunity to talk seriously about them once session began. And uh, there is, uh, if you have a balanced package, and if you have um, enough legislators that are willing to take the steps that are important to take to, to make good, solid policy decisions, uh, and be willing to go back to their districts and explain why they did what they did. Though with and lowering sentencing can. guidelines, I mean, this could, it could get played negatively. And so some members maybe would be afraid to do this, or, or yeah. are you optimistic? No, yes and yes. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, the, the Guidelines Commission changes will take effect unless we pass a law, meaning mm -hmm. House and Senate mm -hmm. signed by the governor, mm -hmm. to, to repeal those changes. Uh, my number one priority on the criminal justice field for this session is to stop any repeal or legislation from getting past the Senate so it won't become law. Um, I would prefer to be able to implement all of the Guidelines Commission recommendations which included statutory changes that they did not have authority to do. Mm -hmm. So they could change some of the presumptive commits, the mm -hmm. sentences, uh, but they couldn't change the statutes regarding thresholds. They couldn't create, for example, a kingpin uh, category for the more serious, higher uh, quantity mm -hmm. uh, drug possession and sale cases with much longer sentences. Uh, they couldn't make some of the changes on the front end with regard to the truly lower level uh, drug crimes as well. Uh, so I can see a package that would include the statutory changes and some of the other changes the Guidelines Commission made. And if we have enough support in the legislature, you can pass that even in an election year. Thank you, Senator Latz, for stopping by today. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. I also had the opportunity to ask Governor Dayton about the option of reopening the Appleton prison under state control. Here's what he had to say. I would veto that measure this session. It hasn't been given any of the forethought. You know, we, there are remedies for overcrowding, and we have a serious problem with overcrowding, but the remedies that should be taken before we build or buy a new prison, uh, we're going to expand a Lionel Lakes, is it Lionel Lakes? Uh, yeah, the, uh, as part of short, as a short term measure, but you know, some of the reform issues of Sentencing Guidelines Commission, 
I personally think that they ought to look, and they won't in this session, I'm sure, because of the politics, but the, the low-level drug of, uh, offenders who are incarcerated for, for amounts that really m make it clear it's for personal use belong in treatment programs. They don't belong in county jails or, or state prisons. That would, changing that would, would uh, free up up to 400 beds.